This is how I make Katagori's Mangura. Welcome to Ghost 3D Prints. This is episode 3 of One Piece Weapon Prop Build. If you're new to the channel, I dedicate myself to designing and building my own weapons. As a beginner myself, I design everything as simple as possible so other people can make them too. All my projects include a 3D printer, so it's the most important tool if you want to begin. Everything else just makes it easier. I share my files on colds3d.com and with that, let's begin. I was inspired to make this weapon different by making it spin just like one of Katakuri's attack and I decided to add a motor to it when I was designing the trident. I'll get more into the motor but first, uh, if you want to make this project, all you need to do is 3D print all the parts. After that, um, I'm using wooden dowels as support since 3D printers are not as big and if you buy one of the cheap ones like I have, an Ender 3, then the build plates are not as big. So I designed everything to fit on the build plates at 200 millimeters by 200 so that way any small printer uh, or beginner printer can do them. Wooden down ones are not required. Uh, they do help with support. And if you never printed before, and especially FDM, which I'm using, it just melts plastic on top of another one so it creates layers. And when you get two big builds like this, especially for weapons, they tend to break if you hit them pretty hard and adding wooden dowels actually help with the build. When adding wooden dowels and you see a lot of other creators uh, use wooden dowels or rods. I like using hot glue gun. You can go with epoxy or other types of glue that you think might help you out. I prefer hot glue as I'm trying to make sure that everything is simple as possible. One trick that I learned, especially in the area I live, which is colder, is I like to warm the parts up, especially where all the holes, uh, the wooden dowels are gonna go. That way, when you add your hot glue in onto the wooden dowel, it doesn't uh, cool down fast enough, so you can get it all the way in, and then it actually warps the plastic inside just a little bit, so it actually goes into all the grooves inside, making a very strong fit. Because this weapon is actually going to spin, um, you have to be very careful with the middle part where the motor is going to sit because you're trying to get as less friction as possible. So it doesn't matter if you cut the wooden dowel shorter as long as they fit, but um, just remember that you don't want them to pass the middle section where the motor housing is going to go. If you do, uh, make sure you measure everything before you start gluing everything. It just prevents you from trying to sand inside, which is very hard to do. All my measurements are in Pulse 3 d so if you want to read about it, uh, where all the parts are, uh, I'm using two different types of wooden dowels in this build. The next step you have to do is welding the parts together. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into details, but you can see there's other people that have uh, better tutorials on how to do this. But pretty much what you're doing is you're gonna use a soldering iron, uh, change the tip to something that is uh, more flat. I have one that looks like a knife. And what I like to do first is I just slowly fuse the two parts together uh, I'm not going very deep at the beginning just to make sure that all the parts are correct, nothing is warped. If you make a mistake, then you can just break it off and retry it again. Just make sure that all the parts are put together uh, as straight as possible. Anything that you make a mistake will warp. Uh, once you put the motor in, it's going to start to wobble a lot. So make sure you take your time. After that comes the fun part about making weapons, it's sanding and once you weld all your parts together and you make the, the bigger welds and you can see other videos about it, um, which is pretty much just you weld or you put your hot, hot iron deeper into the plastic so it fuses both parts stronger. 
but doing so will create uh, bigger holes and this is why I'm using uh, wood filler uh, that's my preferred choice of filler uh, you can use whatever you want uh, I've seen other people use different things but you're just gonna go to all the cracks and um, holes that you made doing the fusing part fill everything in uh, any little mistake you make then this is the part where you have to spend more time making sure that everything is smooth once you put all that uh, filler in you have to send it make sure everything is smooth um, this is the step that you're gonna have to take more time I only did it once and you're gonna see at the end how bad it looks but uh, take your time I'll recommend three times send it and paint no prime it and then send it again just to make sure that all the parts looks great and lastly you will be painting it um, before you paint my build uh, I left the top part that it can be removed just cuz I seen videos of other people when they make weapons they want to take it apart so I gave you guys the option if you want to build in to take it apart it screws the top part and the bottom part they both screw, screw together so if you want to fuse them to make it look nicer as you can see in the video that little slice and, and like in the middle I'll recommend fusing it first before painting it but if not then you can just go ahead and paint it if you did everything correctly then this will be the end piece that you should get um, my recommendations will be to invest time in sanding and priming to make sure that you have a smooth finish and I will recommend also using spray can as the cheap paint that I use for um, target didn't look as good as I wanted so now it's time for the motor uh, here's the motor housing and this is the motor that I'm using it's a gear motor uh, and that's the motor I don't know what to call it it's just what holds the motor and the dowel with it together uh, I'm using some M3 screws to tighten it together and then that big wooden dowel that you saw at the beginning is this part right here and I'm not gluing it to the whole build it's actually you see that blue tape as friction and you're gonna see I move it up and down very hard and it doesn't come out so as long as you use a lot of tape then it shouldn't come out but if you want to fuse it use glue or anything else then feel free to modify it as you want once you have the motor in place, uh, connect it to the PVC pipe as my handle and make sure you test it to make sure everything is spinning. I'm not going to go into details about connecting the battery. It's a very simple idea. It's just connecting a switch in between your battery and your motor. Um, you have your soldering iron, so just connect the cables, run them through the PVC pipe and whatever you want to attach your switch then I'll leave it to you I'm um, using one right in the middle of the handle and then the batteries at the bottom all right so that's it once you have everything already in place everything is set on um, this part right here if you want to fuse it and just have it completely set then just make sure you, instead of painting it uh, first, you fuse them together so you have a nicer set. But before you do anything, make sure that everything spins right. Uh, make sure you use a lot of sanding and stuff. But here it is once again. <laughs>